Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Properties of whole numbers. This video will help you understand prime numbers, find the factorizations of a number, and find multiples of a number. Let's start by taking a look at some definitions. A prime number is divisible by only two whole numbers, itself and one. A composite number is divisible by a whole number other than itself and one. Let's take a look now at some examples that will help us understand prime and composite numbers. I have a list of numbers here, and I'm going to go through this list of numbers and determine whether each of them is prime or composite. Let's start with two. Well, the only numbers that divide evenly into two are two and one. So two is a prime number. Three, the only numbers that divide evenly into three are itself and one. So three is a prime number. Four, well, four has another number that will divide into it. Two will divide into four. So therefore, four is a composite number. Five, the only numbers that divide evenly into five are itself and one. So five is a prime number. Six, both 2 and 3 divide into 6, so that makes 6 a composite number. 7, the only numbers that divide evenly into 7, itself and 1, so 7 is prime. 8, both 2 and 4 divide into 8, so that makes 8 a composite number. 9, 9 is a little bit tricky. You might think prime, but remember that 3 divides evenly into 9, so 9 is a composite number. 10, both 2 and 5 divide into 10, so it's composite. Finally, 11. 11 is a prime number because it can only be divided by itself and 1. So in the last examples we took a look at, the numbers were small, and it was easy to determine whether they were prime or composite. But how do we determine if a large number, like 53, is prime or composite? Do we check divisibility for every number smaller than 53? That would be a large list of numbers, and it would take us a long time. Fortunately, there's a way for us to narrow or shrink that list. We only need to check the prime numbers whose square is smaller than 53. And that sounds technical, but it's actually pretty easy to do. In my table here, I have a list of the first six prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. Below that, I have a list of their squares. So remember, a square is if I take 2 to the second power, that's squaring 2, which means 2 to the second power gives me 4. Or for 3, 9, for 5, 25, 7, 49, etc. So to find out if 53 is prime, we're only going to need to check these numbers whose square is smaller than 53. Well, we're certainly going to have to check 2 because the square of 2 is 4, and that's smaller than 53. We're going to need to check 3. Again, 9 is smaller than 53. We're going to need to check 5 because 25 is smaller than 53. We're also going to need to check 7 because 49 is smaller than 53. However, we don't need to check 11 or 13 because those squares, 121 and 169, have gone well beyond and above 53. So to figure out if 53 is a prime or composite number, all we need to do is see if any of these four numbers will divide into it evenly. Let's start with 2. Will 2 divide into 53 evenly? Well, the divisibility test for 2 tells us that 2 only divides into even numbers. 53 is odd, so 2 is not going to divide into 53. Let's check 3. The divisibility test for 3 tells us to take the sum of these digits in 53. So I'm going to take 5 plus 3, which is going to give us 8. Now, if 3 divides evenly into 8, it will divide evenly into 53. And if it doesn't, it won't divide into 53. Well, 3 doesn't divide evenly into 8, so it is not going to divide evenly into 53. Let's check 5. Well, the divisibility test for 5 tells us that 5 only goes into numbers that end in 0 or 5. Well, 53 doesn't end in 0 or 5, so 5 is not going to divide into 53 evenly. Now let's check 7. We're not going to use a divisibility test here. We're just going to do the long division the old-fashioned way. So 7 won't go into 5, but it will go into 53 7 times, which is 49. And when I subtract, you'll notice that I get a remainder of 4. So 7 does not divide into 53 evenly either. Since we checked all of the prime numbers, whose square is smaller than 53, and none of these four numbers went into 53 evenly, we would say that 53 is prime. 
Now it's time to check your understanding of prime and composite numbers. Pause your video player and answer these four guided practice questions. When you finish, hit play to see how you did. Question 1. 7 is a prime number because it can only be divided evenly by itself and 1. 6 is a composite number because it can be divided evenly by both 2 or 3. Question 3. To determine if the number 42 is prime or composite, we must check the prime numbers whose square is smaller than 42. So we're going to need to check 2 because its square is smaller than 42. We're going to need to check 3. Its square is smaller than 42. And we're going to need to check 5 because its square is smaller than 42. However, we don't need to check anything higher because 7, the square of 7, is 7 times 7, or 49. That's bigger than 42. So we just need to check these three numbers. Question 4. Is 42 prime or composite? Well, let's check to see if any of these three numbers will divide into it evenly. Let's start with 2. The divisibility test for 2 tells us that 2 will go into an even number. Well, 42 is an even number. 2 will divide into 42. We can stop right there because if there's a number that divides into 42 other than itself and 1, it's a composite number. Now let's take a look at some definitions. A factor is a number that divides a number evenly. A two-number factorization of a number is made up of any two numbers that multiply to give the number. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help us understand factor and two-number factorizations. Our first example is to find all the factors of 15. Well, the easiest ones to start with is 1 times 15. And you'll notice I'm organizing this list from small to large. This will help me find all the factors of 15. Well, let's see. 2, well, 2 won't go into 15, but 3 will. And then I ask myself, 3 times what will give me 15? Well, 3 times 5 will give me 15. And now you notice that 3 and 5 are getting really close together. The only other numbers I need to check to see if they go into 15 would be 4, and 4 doesn't divide into 15. So there is my list of factors for 15. The next example, find all of the two number factorizations of 30. So what we're looking for here is all the pairs of numbers that multiply to give us 30. Well, again, let's start with a small one. 1 times 30, that gives us 30. That's one of our two number factorizations. 2. 2 will divide into 30, it's an even number. 2 times 15. There's another two number factorization of 30. Well, 3 also goes into 30. Let's see, 4, nope, 4 won't go into 30, but 5 will. 5 times 6 will give us 30. And notice 5 and 6 are very close together, so I know I finished and found all of the two number factorizations. Let's take a look at another definition. When a factorization of a number is written using only prime numbers, it is called a number's prime factorization. Now let's take a look at some examples to understand prime factorization. In the example here, we're asked to find the prime factorization of 30 and 24. Let's start with 30. Now we're going to use what's called a factor tree to find this prime factorization. So the first thing we're going to do is think of any two number factorization of 30 that comes to our head. Well, I'm going to think 3 times 10. Now notice 3 is a prime number, so we're going to leave 3 alone. However, 10 is a composite number, and I can break it down again. So I'm thinking of a two number factorization of 10. Well, 2 and 5. And now you'll notice that all of these numbers are prime. And if we take the ends of every tree branch, that is going to be the prime factorization of 30. So the prime factorization of 30 is 3 times 2 times 5. Let's take a look at 24. Again, we'll start with any two number factorization that comes to mind. Uh, oh, let's see, 4 times 6 to give us 24. Well, both of those numbers are composite. So I'm going to break 4 down again, 2 times 2, and I'm going to break 6 down again, 2 times 3. So the prime factorization for 24, we're going to take the end of every tree branch. So that prime factorization is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now it's time to check your understanding of factor, two number factorizations, and the prime factorization. Pause your video player and answer these three guided practice questions. When you're done, 
hit play to see how you did. Question 5. Find a factor of 20. Well, I'm going to list all the factors because you may not have found the one that it comes to my mind. So I'll start with 1, the smallest one, and I think 1 times 20. So there are two factors of 20. Either of those would have been good. Uh, 2 and 10 would have worked. And then 4 and 5. So as long as you chose one of those numbers, you answered correctly. Question 6. Find three two-number factorizations of 20. Well, I kind of have them listed up there already, but let's see. So let's start with 1 times 20. That would have worked for two-number factorization. 2 times 10, that would have worked. And also, 4 times 5. Question 7. Find the prime factorization of 20. Well, we can start with our factor tree here, and we can start with any of these two-number factorizations we want. Um, I'll choose the middle one, 2 and 10. 2 is prime, so I can leave that alone. However, 10 is not. So I'm going to break 10 down into 2 times 5, and I'm going to take every end of the tree branch. And so the prime factorization of 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Let's take a look at another definition. Multiplying a number by the whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., will give you the multiples of the number. Now let's take a look at some examples to help us understand multiples of a number. In the example here, we need to identify the first four multiples of 5. Well, the very first multiple of 5, we're going to take 5 times 1. So the first multiple of 5 is just 5 itself. The next multiple of 5, 5 times 2. The next multiple is 10, 5 times 3, 15. That's the third multiple of 5. And finally, the fourth multiple of 5 is 5 times 4, or 20. Now it's time for you to check your understanding of multiples and factors. Remember that you multiply to get multiples, and you can think of factors as kind of the numbers that divide into. Pause your video player, and when you finish answering these two guided practice questions, hit play to see how you did. Question 8. Identify the first four multiples of 10. Well, we're going to take 10 times 1, that's 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 3 is 30. And 10 times 4 is 40. So those are the first four multiples of 10. Question 9. List all the factors of 10. Well, the factors of 10 are going to be the numbers that divide evenly into 10. So 1 will go into 10, and 1 times 10 gives us 10. So 10 will also go into 10. 2 goes into 10, and 2 times 5. So that means 5 also goes into 10. So here is the list of all the factors of 10. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.